All right, Lego here is back again, and this time he has some new knowledge. Because I just found out that I can screenshot things on my PS4, so this makes projects way easier coming forward if I ever need to do something again. Um, instead of having to find internets, uh, things on the internet and just taking those, I can now, in a limited capacity, make my own. So that's what you're seeing here. I took Rise of the Tomb Raider, and uh, there's this graphical elements that pop up whenever you raid a tomb, uh, which consists of some circles with some circles inside and some circles off to the side. And I started off trading those manually, but then I just realized it's just a double circle with a hexagonal pattern of smaller circles. So I just made one geometrically perfect one instead and traced the positions of the other ones relative to it and then just made a scaled down version of that same one because it's just, it's just the same graphic three times over. So um, that was pretty easy. And um, there's also a bunch of dots around the uh, the edge there. I'll get back to those in a second. There's, uh, you can see there's some, some line elements as well. Those line elements I actually plan on putting back in later with the text as part of that, so that it integrates better with the, uh, with the writing that I'm about to do. But, um, Having done the circles, I'm just making up a bunch of the, a bunch of circles around there. I think 120 per thing. That way it looks pretty good. And then it's just a matter of copying those over and using a bit of math to scale them relative to the size that they're supposed to be. So just me adding up some ratios. And there we go. And that is... Uh, pretty much the, the, the graphical element from the game that pops up. So the, my plan is to take this element and then I am going to do some writing on top of that to integrate that. And I was about to do that, but then I realized I still need my framing. So um, I need the silhouette to figure out how much space I actually have to work with. So um, I had to do that real quick. And uh, there's not a lot to say about the tracing itself other than the fact that I did this myself. This is the screenshot I took, um, which makes this probably one of the few projects that I've made where I actually had an idea first, and then I actively made the assets necessary to make it a reality instead of the other way around. Typically, I find a screenshot, I find some other asset that someone else has done, and I'm like, oh, wait, this is a great idea for a project, and then I do the project. So it's not typical that I make up the, my, the idea first and then make it a reality. Uh, but this is one of those projects where I had an idea first and then I had the uh, opportunity to make it real by myself. So I'm really happy about that. And you're probably going to see a few more projects in the future in that same vein now that I have access to, well, the games that I own anyway. Um, so that's really cool. Now, the glow stick here is going to be sort of the center focus thing, sort of like the other Rise of the Tomb Raider project I made with the glow um with the flare from the front cover of rise of the tomb raider i want to make this into a lighting element as well so i'm making up the glow stick and originally in the in this uh, context the glow stick is orange but in the prologue of the game in syria it's actually blue glow sticks and i really like that so um i'm going to make this a blue glow stick totally so um you're going to see more of that glow stick later. And, and I'm just making some adjustments to the silhouette itself. Like usual, um, some elements, certain elements work best in, uh, in shadow format and other things don't. So it's up to you always to make sure what elements you want to represent and what you want to discard. And sometimes you have to add new contours yourself to sort of tell the reader what is actually going on and what is this supposed to be. Now I'm just making up the hair at this point. I feel like at this point I've gotten pretty good at making hair uh, using the freehand tool and the power stroke. It's really organic, it's really quick, and you can do some, some pretty intricate designs if, with this if you really want to. Uh, I just kept this fairly simple, a bunch of strands everywhere. And uh, now I'm just doing some small adjustments to the contours because especially that right hand there it, it's just a big blob uh, it's pretty hard to see what uh, what's going on and uh, now I'm just tracing the ice picks and 
case in point about uh, composition being important in shadow work, this pickaxe here, ice pick, sorry, it was really hard to trace because if you chose it, traced it, you got a really awkward shape that didn't really look like anything. Um, so this is one of those times where I actually had to make up a new silhouette completely disregarding the original just to convey the idea that there is actually two pickaxes here, ice picks. Jesus, I keep calling them ice picks, sorry. Um, I keep calling them pickaxes, sorry. Now, anyway, having uh, having made the uh, core figure there and some of the different aspects, I'm just adding some teeth here to the to the ice picks to give them that extra little piece of detail and doing some small adjustments there, putting it back into frame, it looks pretty good. So at this point, I have the complete framing, the graphic element and the silhouette, so it's time to actually do the writing. Now, the writing is made in GC, which is a system I really like. And I know I say this about pretty much every system I use, but I really like this as well. And it has some properties that I really, really wanted for this project particularly. Um, one of which is the fact that this system uses pretty much only closed contours. So there's no open areas, there's no uh, circles with a lot of dents and, and, and divots and stuff. It's just closed contours most of the time and they just slide from one to the next to the next. It's really organic and size doesn't matter when it comes to most of the letters, which means I can make this huge hexagon behind Lara there, which makes the whole text readable while it takes up pretty much all of the available space, which is something I wanted. I wanted this to fill out the remaining empty areas and I wanted a system that looks aesthetically similar to the writing, or not writing, sorry, just the, the circle, the elements of the original graphical element. So this fits really nicely in with that. Lots of closed circles, circles within circles, and just a hint of some hexagon shapes there to, to break it up a bit. One other cool thing about GC is that uh, line thicknesses don't matter at all. I can make any thicknesses I want anywhere at any time, and it's still do not change the, uh, it doesn't change the writing. So um, I had the freedom to make up that as I went along, which is pretty cool. And overall, this just really, I mean, I like this language a lot. It's not API based. And yeah, there's not a lot else to say about it. I'm uh, just making up the rest of the text here. And then I'm just making a bunch of backups before I do the last piece of destructive editing. And then it's time to actually add some of the lines to it because there is a few letters that require lines. And this system is set up in a way that means the quantity of lines matter. If I put two lines on something, then it means something. And if I put any other amount of lines on it, it doesn't mean anything. So this gives me the freedom to add a bunch of extra lines into the text without actually changing anything, which is what you are seeing me doing right now. I'm just adding a bunch of extra uh, line elements that don't actually affect the writing itself because of the quantity. So this breaks up the uh, the remaining emptiness as well as reintroducing those lines that was in the original graphical element. And at this point, I'm just doing some final adjustments and then I'm actually going to mesh the whole thing together because while this looks cool the original graphical element which is blue right now it still interacts with the text they, they're still touching and that can change the meaning of some of the letters and uh, i don't want any ambiguity about that so what i'm doing is i'm going to separate things out the different um, the different elements we have the graphical element we have the lines and we have the text I want these three graphical elements to interact with each other, interlock in a way, but without actually um, affecting each other. So while I'm doing some basic um, backups now, just dragged out to the side there, what I'm doing now is I'm doing an offset of the text to make sure that I don't uh, have any piece of text touch the graphical elements. And I'm going to do the same thing with the lines, just to give it a more intricate feeling. 
So I'm taking the lines and I'm actually cutting them off at any place where they interact with the original graphical element so that the lines don't actually touch the elements, but they do touch the text in the places that they need to. And it really gives a cool effect of everything being cohesive and, and like made at one at once. So having done that, it's time to do the last thing, coloring. And this took longer than usual because coloring for me is pretty often pretty quickly. Um, but not this time because I wanted the glow stick to really shine here, no pun intended. Um, and I tried a bunch of different ways of making the text and the, the, the elements and the whole thing. I wanted them I wanted them to sort of be lit up by the glow stick. And it's not an easy effect to do. At least I didn't find a good way of doing it until way later. Um, I tried doing some gradients with the center being the glow stick. I tried uh, adding some, some lighting details by using smoke and uh, it didn't really work out. So I tried to backtrack a bit and just make the glow stick itself first, which is pretty much just a, uh, a lightsaber effect. That's what I call it whenever you have a couple of blurs on top of each other with different um, lightness effects. So deep blue, light blue, white. That's the basic lightsaber effect there. Um, so you can see there, I tried to make some uh, some smoke on top to, to sort of give it a glow effect. It worked really well with the flare project, but this is not a flare. It doesn't really look uh, like it belongs. So I ended up discarding that pretty quickly. And um, at this point, I just had to unionize the whole thing because three different gradients didn't really work out for me the way I hoped. So now it's just one big element. And what I'm doing now is I'm actually doing lightsaber effects on it because if it works for the glow stick, it must work for the text as well. So I did some, uh, some color work to try and, and match the same uh, color palette as the, um, as the glow stick itself. I really wanted that glow stick feel to the text and the whole thing. So um, I ended up doing three layers like usual. And uh, at this point, this looks pretty good. I just need to make the glow stick the center um, to really sort of, of give it the effect that this is actually what's lighting up the whole thing. Um, and before I did that, I actually did some clipping groups, which is a new project thing for me to do. It's a new technique um, using her shadow as a clip I actually made an inner shadow in a way that sort of highlights one side of her figure while not highlighting the other. At least that's what my attempt. Um, so using the, the clip effect, I can actually do that without obscuring or affecting the surrounding elements, which is um, really powerful actually. And I'm probably going to see, you're going to see a lot more of this in the future. Um, maybe even a tutorial if anyone asks, I don't know quite yet if I want to do that but there is clipping tutorials out there but they're not really at least for me they don't really get the job done in a way that I can use uh, so I don't know maybe maybe I'll do something like that in the future if uh, if there's any requests for it but for now I made a clipping group to the inner shadow added some two-tone effects there you can see me messing about with the with the clip group hierarchy on the right there to uh, to get it just right. And um, having added that on top, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. It's a, it's a bit much that color, but uh, the, the same effect applies. Just keep it down and there we go. So almost done with that. There we go. Just doing some subtle editing to the to the highlight there. And now let's actually return to the glow stick because I really want this to glow. And uh, what I ended up doing after failing on some smoke effects again, I, uh, I did what I probably should have done all along, which is use a mesh gradient because those things are really powerful when used correctly. And in this case, it was a pretty easy thing to do. I just added a bunch of uh, nodes, highlighted the area I wanted, 
kept the rest of it pretty dark blue. It's it's almost black, but it, it's a bit there's a blue tint to the background there. Um, but added in that uh, that gradient mesh gradient there, so now we have the glowing well glow stick, and we got the glowing background lit up by set glow stick, and now I'm just finalizing some of the elements there to make everything mesh together nicely. I added a bit of a border there. Um, and at this point I need to sort of, well, get her legs in order because I don't want them sticking out of the circle. Nothing fancy here, just manipulating the nodes that uh, uh, that the borders on her feet. So I just, I just put that inside, nothing fancy. And uh, at the last second there, I took the, um, the border circle and I made it part of the design so that everything is cohesive. And after finally checking this through, it's, uh, it's pretty much done. I'm really happy with the fact that this was made by a screenshot that I made for once. Um, and I quite like the way it looks. So, bye.